All right, so to show you uh, how to do some dead wood, um, uh, I'm going to actually show you from a real painting, uh, this um, grizzly bear study I'm doing. In this uh, section here, let's bring it up on the screen. All right, so this is some nice dead rotted wood, and we're going to show you how to do that. And for this, I only uh, really mix two colors because I see uh, two different drastic color changes, which is the shadow. Bring that up on the screen. In the highlight area and what i'll do is i'll just mix my variations of color from those two base colors so the first color was a uh, white and that white was made up of some titanium white a little bit of uh, mars black now I use the mars because i want it to be warm and it has a reddish tinge to it reddish base to it and i also put in a, a little bit of uh, burnt uh, umber and a touch of raw sienna okay for the shadowed area there's the brown i used a mixture of raw umber burnt umber a little bit of dioxazine purple and a uh, some Payne's gray and i used Payne's gray because i wanted a cooler deeper blue shadowy color okay so those are the two base colors so let me just block in this area and we'll go from there so I've blocked in my colors here and you can a little hard to see the white but the, there's our base white there's our base brown but then as I was painting and I decided that this area here was there was a lot more of the orange than there was the white highlight in it so I decided to mix up a third quick dish base color and uh, what I did is I actually took some of the uh, bare brown and I altered it and the bare brown was made up of uh, some uh, raw and burnt umber a little bit of uh, Mars black some titanium white some raw sienna and just a touch of uh, cadmium yellow light just to warm it up a bit and then what I did is I took that mixture mixture from the bear and I kind of downtoned it with a little more titanium white and I put in a little bit of yellow oxide and uh, if you if you're not using liquid text that would be yellow ochre and any other any other brand okay and uh, that would be the base orange color now that i got my what is known as the local colors which just means the most predominant color of that area blocked in what i'll do now is i'll start pushing and pulling those base colors and creating the shape and the form of the wood so let's get to doing that all right so i'll start softening off between these two and what i did is i mixed uh, about a 50 percent uh, color that's about halfway between this orange and that uh, the shadow color and what I'm doing is I'm just kind of softening off the transition between those two colors so it's not as harsh it's not as brutal okay so now I want to make a little bit of a the shadowy lip here so I took the white and I added a little bit of uh, Payne's gray into it and a little bit of uh, raw umber okay so right around the edges here see a little bit of a warmth so all i did is i took some of the base white and added a little bit of the uh, the base orange color and there we're just gonna Soften it off a little bit just to give it some some warmth. You can see in here this area has more of a bluey tinge to it. So what I did is I took some white and put some more uh, ultramarine blue into it. And now I'll block this in. Now you know your colors right when. See I want to lay this on the board right now. You can't really see it. But when it dries, acrylics always go, lighter colors go a little darker, and darker colors go a little lighter. So keeping that in mind, if I mixed my color to be look like it's the right color when I get onto the board, it's probably going to be that right value, that slightly darker value, when, I, uh, when it dries. You see how there's like an orangey? stage in here now it's a subtle gradation of color change in here that what i'd like to do is probably just airbrush that in and uh you know what i'm, I'm going to airbrush this one in if you don't have an airbrush just paint this section right around here the exact same way you just did here but with a touch of orange take the base color and add just a little bit of this orangey color in but i'm going to show you how i do it in the studio and i see this area as being a little bit of airbrush so let's do that 
Okay, so here's the airbrush, and I've mixed just a little bit of the base white with a little bit of the orange in. And all I'm going to do is mist that color in. Now, before I do that, I drew in my line for the bluey color. So I'm just going to erase that and get rid of that. Because if I airbrush over top of that, it'll create a a barrier, a film barrier, and I won't ever be able to get that line out of there without painting over it. All right, so now I'm just gonna... And it's just slight color variations. You don't wanna overdo that. You, if you overdo this, it becomes too strong, and too predominant, and it draws too much attention. This is dead wood. You're just throwing a little bit of, uh, of a slight color change into it. So I'm just going to continue on here by putting, looking at my structure, and there's a little more undershadow. Let's show that up there. See what I'm talking about? See? Okay. And all I did is I took a little bit of the white and I put in some Payne's Gray and a little bit of raw umber. Okay. And as soon as you do that, you create a, uh, a front face. So your shape turns. We'll get fancy a little bit later, but I don't need to uh, go too far too soon. Okay. Okay, and now I just took a little bit of the shadow color here. And I'm just making it round a little bit. I actually took some of the uh, background white and a little bit of the orange, made a lighter value. I'm just going to dry brush that over the edge here. Might even take a little more white. And just dry brush this over the edge. Okay, just wherever I want to bring out, bring a top edge out. Okay, now I'm just taking some of this shadow color up here. And we're going to make some uh, of the cracks in the wood. Don't overdo this, okay? People have a tendency to go nuts on this, and then it doesn't look good anymore. So what I did is I added a little took that base, the shadow color, base shadow color. I added a little bit of the base white, but then I also added in a little bit of ultramarine blue. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing up any edge here. Okay, anywhere you want there to be an edge. Okay. Then up here, Remember shadows, wood doesn't stop just because it's going into a shadow, so. Okay, and to get even a little more depth, I took the shadow color and added a little more Payne's Gray. And these will just create deeper recesses. Just go every so slightly darker. Now see how much that is? That's gonna be way too dark when it dries. So just give it a little dab with your finger. It just takes that edge off the color. We can make a little crack in the wood there. Maybe bring this one down, there we go. Put little cracks in the wood here. So what I did is I took the orange and added a little bit of the brown into it. And I just want to go just a couple of light 
And when they dry, they'll come out. It was the same theory as don't uh, mix the color so that when it lays on the board, when the strokes first laid on the board, it looks like it's the same color. And when it dries, it's just a subtle change. Okay. Okay. So now we can start breaking up the highlighted area the exact same way that we just did the shadowed area. So I want to start putting in some of the uh, cracks in the wood. So again, I use this blue mixture where I took the white and added in a little bit of uh, Payne's gray and just a touch of um, uh, uh, ultramarine blue. And this is the underside. This is where it's gonna cast a little bit of a shadow. Okay, so when I lay it on, looks like it's the same color, but when it dries, boom, the exact color we want. Okay, so if I want even deeper grooves, now I add just a little touch more black. And when that dries, it'll be a little deeper. And I don't put this everywhere. I just put it where I want very deep, like deeper cracks. I have uh, some pure titanium white and I can bring out some top edges. So you see as I do that, it creates a top side and starts giving the uh, dead wood some shape. Breaking up the end here. Make it jagged. crack in the wood to be deeper I create a higher contrast okay don't go overboard on that or start looking so if uh, things aren't dark enough or not you can do washes and this is just a watered down this is shadow color watered down and then just Pulling it through the shadowed area to bring that edge out a little bit more. Okay, this is just pure base white color. I'm just gonna ping the tops of some of these. Just makes it a little more jagged. Highlight some of these top edges. Okay, again, so don't go squirrely on the, the highlights. Okay, overworking it just end up in a uh, unconvincing wood texture. And just do some final deeper, almost that black back there. 
again, just making little deeper edges. We zoomed in here so I can show you it. Uh, you can start doing little minute details if you like. Again, don't overdo the do this so R. It becomes a real focal point. So I like to keep those to a minimum. And I'm such a liar. I tend to overdo everything. Okay, just to make that a little deeper. Okay, and to finish it off, I just took some of this orange here. And I'm just gonna fan it in from place to place in this. And once that's do what it does is it just kind of ties it in. It also adds a little bit of life to it so it's not so dead. I mean, it is dead wood, but it still has a little bit of, uh, you know, um, life to it. So, and again, this is definitely one of those areas where you don't want to do too much because doing too much will kill it. And I think that's it. So that's how you do wood textures. This one being dead wood. Okay. Okay. Change my mind. I want to put a bit of the reflective water down here. So all this is is taking a, a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and yellow oxide and mixing them together. And it just creates a little bit of a downside, a uh, bottom edge to the wood and it'll be reflecting water. Okay, just a little add on.